Hello everyone. Um, welcome back. I'd like to retest. I'd like to revisit a topic which I approached before, which was testing the new Turnergy graphene batteries, which were which I found to be very good. They have a an apparent discharge of 65C. This is a 4S one, and I tested last time, but um, some people said my testing methodologies weren't consistent and that you can't compare apples and oranges and this kind of thing. So I've got a slightly different setup this time, and I'm just going to quickly walk you through what I've got here. First of all, I've got an Arduino, which um, if people don't know, it's a small microcontroller, which can... Um, which you can easily write C code for and perform certain things. And one of the libraries which it comes with is called the Servo Library. And uh, the Servo Library allows you to control things like speed controllers. So I've written kind of a torture test which ramps the motor up and down, um, and then it displays. It, it just it's completely repeatable because it will do certain things. It'll ramp it up. It'll go to max. Go to min. Go to half throttle. Then back to max. Min. This kind of thing. Um, quite a simple code but it, it's effective because it'll do the same thing every single time. And <clears throat> uh, the second thing I've got is a much larger motor. This is a Multistar uh, 3525850 spinning a 10 inch uh, prop. So the thrust is gonna be quite high on this one. I've got the same 30 amp uh, ZTW Spider, or I think this is a 40 amp ESC, so no problems there. Both of these stay cold during the test, so that's repeatable as well. This is a lead acid battery to just to power the Arduino, so it's completely independent. And uh, next, I've got my candidates of batteries, which I'd like to quickly run through. Um, excuse me. Um, so we've got the. This is a very popular battery because it's cheap. It. It's not. It's a. It's a fourteen hundred, and it's supposed to have forty to eighty C discharge, which normally means it's 40C continuous. As I said, the uh, Turnergy graphene is meant to be 65C. This is also 4S. Then I've got an old uh, Nanotech, 25 to 50C, um, which you notice these won't hold up very well. And I've got one from a local shop, the Drone Factory. This is a 75C um, continuous, apparently. Then I've got my favorite battery, which is the Tattoo 1375C, um, also for us, of course, these are all for us. And then as a comparison, because the C rating is obviously depending on um, the size of the battery as well, of how much current it can deliver. And this is a 30C, 4500 milliamp uh, Team Black Sheep LiPo, which I use for my Discovery Pro. This is gonna be kind of the benchmark battery. And the setup here is as follows. I've got the scale, reading the thrust, I've got a one um, multimeter reading the current and the second one reading the voltage of the battery. Now, just a quick note on the current. Last time people commented that I wasn't reading the current and that's true because a multimeter that can read current is so high is uh, relatively expensive and I don't have one. So these can normally go up to 10 amps and that's it. So what I've done is I've made a current shunt here and you read the... Um, voltage across the current shunt and thereby you can calculate um, the because it's a known resistance because of the wire that's used you can then calculate how much current is flowing through it using ohm's law so this is uh, that 18 gauge wire solid wire has 20.9 ohms of resistance per kilometer it's 18 gauge so 47.7 millimeters of wire will give you 10 millivolts per amp which means 100 millivolts would be 10 amps because it's divided by 10. And then you change the um, figure. So I'm gonna just connect up all these, uh, all this equipment here. I'm gonna turn this on, this is gonna be voltage. This is the one reading the battery because it's uh, less, uh, it doesn't update as fast. This one is the one reading the, um, the current. So whatever you see there in a range, I'm just going to change the range to millivolt because I know it's going to be millivolts. There we go. Here we go. That's better. All right, so let's get started. There, there you've got 16.38 uh, volts. Um, can you see the scale? I'm just going to tear that. 
this reading zero. Sorry about the glare on the scale, that's a bit annoying, but oh well. Alright, let's go. There's the SC initiating. And let's watch it go. And that's the end of the test. So let me unplug that and let's move on to the next battery. There's the, that was the TBS LiPo, the biggest one of the bunch. The voltage drop was not so great as you saw. The current was about 17.5 amps, which obviously we're not, you know, I'm not gonna be able to pull 100 amps in here and it's like a chest four motors and really it's just, it's just physics. So. We're just going to have to extrapolate the data to what we do here. So let's next let's take our little turn energy with the lower C rating, 25 to 50 C, and let's go. Right, and Arduino, are we ready? Okay, that was the Nanotech, the old one. Next, let's move on to the next um, lower C rating, I would say. These, I fly these batteries regularly, they're fun to fly. They don't have the punch of the others, and they're quite heavy, but they uh, last a bit longer, and they are really, really cheap. So, this is the Multistar 1400.
Okay, good. That was the multi star. So that was the multi star. Next, let's do the next highest one, which I believe to be the, with the battery in question, which is the uh, Turnergy Graphene battery. Low internal resistance, therefore high performance, yada yada yada. I fly them, I believe it. I'm just, there's just empirical data, so off we go. Okay, good. Next, let's do the local supplier drone factory, 75C battery. There we go. Okay, good. That was the drone factory battery. And last but not least, the Tattoo is uh, probably my favorite battery. I only have one of them. It's, it's been damaged, but it still works, and it is unbelievable. So, Tattoo 75C. Off we go. These were all charged to fill, by the way. They will fill batteries.
And that's it. That's it for the test. Now let's get on to the data and analyze it. So, see you soon. Hello. Um, so, in conclusion, I'm in front of the computer now. Um, the Team Black Sheep 30C delivered the most punch and also the most watts um, at the end. So, just a quick um, a quick point on the on the watts which I measured. I said min voltage times min amps. That's the last ramp uh, which the code does, and I just take the last values, the so the lowest voltage and the highest current at that point, and I just multiply them together to get the watts. So the Team Black Sheep uh, 30C 4.5 amp hours, which is 135 amps continuous. Um, obviously, the bigger the battery, the more it can deliver. It was 266.7 watts, so that's not unexpected. And also, the recovery voltage was highest at 16.15 volts because it obviously didn't use as much of the battery. So it also had a very high thrust at uh, 1,074 grams. Next, the poor old Nanotech 25C uh, 1.3 that one was able to deliver 195 watts and had a very low recovery voltage, also the thrust was the lowest. Next, the Multistar was 213 watts, uh, which is which is not bad. Uh, the recovery voltage was also okay, the thrust was low, but it is only, I mean, it says 40 to 80 C, it, it's definitely gonna be the lower bounds, that's how these things are marketed. So it's only able, it's only supposed to de deliver 56 amps continuous, and when I push these things on the mini quad, the the battery alarm goes off every time I do a punch out, so they just they just can't handle it. But that's okay. They're good for for tutoring about and practicing. Next is the graphene. Um, the graphene delivered well at two hundred thirty five point five watts uh, at the end. The recovery voltage was also quite high, which is the, the trait of them. I've noticed they they deliver, 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 and then all of a sudden they just drop off, um, as we've said before. So um, two hundred thirty five point five watts is not bad and a max thrust of 1,015 grams. However, if I compare to the next one, um, the Drone Factory battery, it's 256 watts, so higher, and they're lighter. So, they're not as cheap, but they, I mean, I don't know. The, the graphene, the graphene's are good, if because they, they're cheap, but if they drop the packaging, maybe they could be even cheaper, then more people would buy them, so it's something to think about. And last but not least, the tattoo, it's my favorite battery. Um, it's delivered 247 watts at the end, 1,079 grams max thrust, um, recovery voltage 16.05. A note on the tattoo, when I've put five by 4.5 by three bullnose props on my mini quad, and I've used these batteries, it, the, the tattoo delivered up to 120 amps, which is frankly quite ridiculous, because I've got an OSD on the uh, mini quad. Whereas the other batteries can't deliver as much. I think the graphene was max 100 amps and the others maybe 80. So it, it really, the Tattoo is my favorite battery. Um, it also costs a fair bit more than the others. So that's it. If you would like me to um, do any more tests, if you'd like me to change the code or run longer cycles, maybe until the batteries are empty, um, I'll speed up the, that part there in that case. Or if you'd like to see the code or know how to do it, uh, please just let me know in the comments below um, and I'll get on that. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.